together when we arrive in West Virginia. Get settled in. Get that's settled right. in. And, uh, right. But we're, we're just happy that we've had uh, these few weeks to be together. Yes. Uh, my knee operation has come along well. I'm doing very well. And 
uh, we decided that we wasn't going to sit around and whine and worry <laughs> about the coronavirus no. and, and my knee operation, but we were going to just do what we can to magnify the Lord. Mm, amen. Now listen, God's been good to all of us. He sure has. And through the middle of everything, we can still see that God's hand, all things work together for good to those that love God, to those who are called yeah. according to his purpose. And Aren't Je you glad you're called? I am. And Jesus said we would have trials and tribulations, but he said, I'll be with you. He said, be of good cheer. That's right. What could be better than to have the creator of the universe right here with us? And for him to encourage us with the words, be of good cheer. Yes. For I have, have overcome, overcome the world. world. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. What let's do you say do it. Uh, this Memorial Day? And uh, just want to thank God. For those that have sacrificed, some gave all, all gave some. And I want to thank God for the families and for those men and women that have given their life, that have served for us to be in a God-fearing, wonderful place in this planet called earth to live the good old united states of america thank you thank all of you that has given so that we might be free to do what we're doing right now Amen. praise the lord father god in the name of jesus Oh, how we praise you this Memorial Day. As we give honor to those servicemen and women and families, we want to give honor, Father God, for the ultimate sacrifice you gave. Amen. For your son Jesus that paid the ultimate price for us to be set free. I want to thank you, Jesus for the life that you brought to me, life and life more abundantly. Amen. Lord, you took the worry out of my daily program. You've took my plans and given me your plans. Amen. But Lord, there's so many that are living in fear and doubt now. So many single mothers and fathers and families that they don't know what to do because they have little children that they're responsible for. God, help us to look to you. And if we have sin in our life, to repent and turn from that sin and turn to you, and you will change things. Amen. God, may our nation on this Memorial Day, may we acknowledge our sin before you and be willing to turn from sin, from darkness into light. Amen. And dedicate our hearts and our minds and our resources for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, please Jesus, please Jesus, touch these beloved ones today and our health care providers Lord, for those that are working in hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living, for those that are in children's hospitals, for those that are on the front line taking care of the needs of our health, strengthen them and bless them and encourage them. Right now, God, we just want to say for the next few minutes, clear our minds of everything but what a wonderful, all-loving, all-powerful God that you are. Amen. And we know if we come to you, you will not turn us away. Lord, for those that are suffering, for those that are thinking of suicide, for those that are thinking of doing things that, that is uh, completely against your Ten Commandments, God, turn them around. 
Lord, don't, don't let them, don't let them fall through the cracks. Amen. Oh, Lord, show them that life is worth the living with Jesus Christ as our Savior, Amen. with the Holy Ghost as our guide, and with the Father in heaven that has a place for us when we leave this world. Amen. Oh, Jesus, your name is wonderful. How excellent is your name in all the earth and the heavens. Amen. Your name is wonderful. wonderful. Your, your name, name is wonderful. wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Sing it, Nikki. He is the mighty King. Master.
has chosen a scripture here where Paul has gone to Rome. He is looking, well, he's following Jesus, and he's looking for people to hear the word of God and to come to know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the Romans were just big on getting together in groups and talking about what they thought, and they think this, and they think that, and and maybe you make a God out of wood, or you make a God out of stone, and well, so Paul said this, that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every, every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for ye are also his offspring. They had a God that they called the unknown God. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man. Do you know who he's talking about? Jesus. He will judge the world in righteousness by that man, Jesus, whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. We can be assured that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life because he said, I am God come in the flesh, and he came back to life after he died on that cross to show us who he was and that we could trust him and we could follow him and be with him eternally. Amen. 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 Good word, good word, good news. It sure is. I want to take just a few minutes to look at these scriptures and to apply these scriptures to our heart. God was speaking through his servant, Amen. Paul. And Paul was speaking to a, 
a bunch of people that had a God for everything. They had a God for the sun. They had a God for the moon. They had a God for sex. They had a God for water. They had, but they had all these idols and they had one that was marked to the unknown God. Well, you know what? It's the same way today. Many people have made things their God. People, they're God. Material things, they're God. But I want to tell you, there is someone that if you are not making Jesus Christ number one in your life, mm -hmm. then you're making all these other things your God. That's right. Many gods. But Paul was saying, you know what? You know what? If you seek the truth, if you seek God, you will find him. And while he may be found, you need to be seeking him. I want to know the truth. You know what? I, if there's someone besides Jesus that can save me and forgive my sins, I want to know the truth. Amen. But I'd heard about all these other things that I could do. I could be good enough. I could give enough. I could, uh, I could keep the Ten Commandments pretty much and... Not go out and murder someone or steal, and, and that would qualify me to be with God. But no, 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 no. Amen. God the Father saw the need. Jesus Christ, his son, said, I will be the sacrifice. I will be the one that will step down from my throne and come as a, as a baby born of a virgin young girl. And I will. Grow up in that baby's body and that young teenager's body. I will grow up to be a man and I will live a sinless life. And he did. And then I will sacrifice myself. Yes. Jesus said, no man takes my life. I lay it down and I'll take it back up. Amen. And so the Bible says, Paul says, you know, there was a time when God sort of winked at all of these people trying to find the truth every other way. But he says now he's commanded all people in the verse 30 of that chapter. He's calling us all to repent. Amen. Now, if we're going to repent, who are we going to go to to say, I'm sorry and will you forgive me? You'll go to the one that can do the job. Right. Jesus Christ can do the job. Yes. He came and he made a way where there was no way. Amen. Oh, what wondrous love that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost has given to his creation. Amen. You remember back in Genesis where God said, let us make man in our image. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Amen. No, sir, I did not spring forth from something that crawled out of the ocean. I, my ancestors are not monkeys or gorillas or apes. I want to say that my mother and father all the way back to Genesis was Adam and Eve. God said, let us make man in our image. God made everything and said it was good. And he made a man in his image and a woman shaped and formed from a man's rib for his glory. Amen. And we blew it. We sure did. You know, we want to give Adam and Eve a bad rap. <laughs> we do but let me tell you something. You and I have blown it. Amen. You and I have blown it over and over and over again. Did that change God's love for us? No. When we went out there and sinned purposely and willfully, did God say, well, I just don't love you no more? No, he didn't do that. God said, I'm going to love you unconditionally. I'm going to give you a chance for you to make the right decision. Choose my son Jesus. Choose life and be with me forevermore. In a body that will never again suffer. Amen. Amen. No more pain. 
If there's a lot of old folks, maybe even young folks, listening to my voice, I want to tell you, I'm looking forward to a place where there won't be any more pain. Amen. Even last night, Nikki got up twice to put ice packs on my, my knee that had been replaced. And I, I've, I've been going through terrible pain, but I'm not, hey, I'm not complaining because I think when in my worst pain that it's not even the tip of the iceberg of what Jesus suffered. Amen. And he did it out of love for me. So when I have pain, you know what I'm learning to do? Being an old man, you know what I'm learning to do when I have pain? Say, Lord, thank you for the pain you suffered for me. And I know that you're with me because if you wasn't with me, this pain, wouldn't, I would not be able to bear it. That's right. And I would do anything to get rid of it. Amen. And that would mean maybe even taking too many drugs or whatever it might be. Without Jesus, I can't, I, you know, I just can't make it. Amen. And I'm looking and putting, putting my faith and trust in him. Amen. And there is, in verse 31, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Let me tell you what. There is not many roads to heaven, and there's not many people that can get you to heaven, but God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost has ordained Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to be the one that will judge us on that day. Folks, there's going to be a judgment day coming. Yes. And I say that because if you don't realize that you're going to have to give an account mm -hmm. for what you've done in your body, Amen. if I don't warn you, if I don't tell you in love, I'm not pointing my finger and saying, look, all of you sorry people out there, all of you bunch of people that are just no good, living in immorality, uh, stealing and killing and, and everything else. Listen, I ain't pointing my finger at you. I'm telling you with my arms wide open with the love of Jesus, speaking words from God's own heart, saying He loved you. Yes. And Jesus has been appointed to be the judge. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? That book that will be opened if our name is not found in the book of life, then we are already condemned if we're not a believer, if we've not been born again. We, we have condemned ourselves That's right. to hell. Mm. Now, we don't have to do that. No. The good news is right now, right now as I speak. Amen. As Pastor Nikki plays this something, I want to give you an opportunity to come and know this one that I come to know when I was 43 years old. Oh, oh, what a difference he made in my life. What a difference you've made in my life. You know what? I want you to experience that too. Repent of your sins. Turn from that sin and turn to Jesus and let Him save you and get to know Him to where He can be Lord of your life. Let the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost, teach you how wonderful it is to be forgiven for God not to hold anything at all against us. Won't you come to Jesus today? Won't you come? Oh, backslider. Oh, Christian that has become complacent and cold. Come back. Come back. Come back today. I beg of you. I beg of you. What have you got to lose? If you're living in misery now, 
If you're living a life that's empty, if you're living a life that without any purpose, what have you got to lose by turning to the Son of the living God, our Messiah, our soon coming King? Won't you do it now? Won't you do it now? Won't you do it? Sing for us, Pastor Nikki. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle.